Good morning, college football fans, and welcome to another episode of Three and Out College Edition right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. Well, 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 we have finally made it to full season in the FBS. Oh my gosh, what a season it was in college football. I mean, can we just get a hand clap to say, like, oh my gosh, we actually got it back. Yeah, we actually got college football season back this year. It was nice to have you because we missed you last year. But I'll tell you what, this year brought so much craziness. It is absolutely, it was something else. But we'll, we'll be getting into that in just a moment. Also, tonight... We are talking about a few championships getting underway, of course. The Stag Bowl in Division Three gets underway tonight. Should be a solid one. We have here the NJCAA National Championship already and set. Tomorrow, we got ourselves the NAIA and the NCAA Division Two Championship. And last week, Riverside gets all the way, but couldn't close the deal. The Triple C Double A, we'll talk about that. And oh yeah, let's not forget, ball season is just less than an hour, less than an hour away. Once again, you're listening to Three and Out College Edition right here on IE Sports Radio. Go directly for all that is sports. Welcome, 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 football fans. Well, here we are yet again, staring down the ending of another college football season. But man, this has been magical. I'll tell you right now, this has been an awesome weekend, or sorry, awesome season. And we're getting set for an awesome weekend to kick off bowl season, of course, in Division One Single A, and man, there's so much to get into with the lower levels, it's it's insane. So today, of course, Taryn and I are getting you all set before bowl season kicks off. We have the Bahamas Bowl getting ready and set with just about, oh my goodness, where are we at? Uh, under 50 minutes, well, I'd actually, sorry, just under an hour to go, and we are ready and set for the Bahamas Bowl as Mid-Tennessee State gets ready to take on Toledo. We also have today, coming up uh, later on in the day, Northern Illinois taking on Coast Carolina in the Cure Bowl. So, two great bowls to get us started for bowl season. And, well, we have a little bit of high school to get into as well as a inevitable national champion, I believe. I'm not sure if they've been crowned yet, but we'll talk about them as well. So, with that said, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming, of course... He is the dude here at IA Sports Radio. We love him, man. Great dude. Uh, of course, co-host of this show, 3 and Out College Edition, founder and host of Set Point here on IE Sports Radio. He'll be talking about a national championship coming up um, this coming week, of course. we got that national champion. The Final Four was set. Now we have our two champions ready to duke it out for the NCAA Women's Volleyball Championship. Taryn will be talking all about that coming up on Monday's episode of Set Point. And then, of course, we have, uh, oh my gosh, his resume is crazy. He is the founder and host of the SoCal Spirit Sports Show, talking all things uh, talking all things Southern California sports. He recently had a birthday. I mean, seriously, there's so many things that are out there. He is the head of our PR department and, uh, well, all-around great dude. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in, of course, one of the COOs of IE Sports Radio and, well, proud Charger fan no matter what happened in last night's game. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome in, Mr. Taryn Rodriguez. What's going on, Taryn? How you doing today, brother? Hey, Larry. Doing good. You know, as you said, Proud Chargers fan, even though last night was a bit of a heartbreaker, but the sun came out, and I cannot complain. I'm ready to talk some college football. You and me both, brother. Hey, it could be worse. You could be a Raider fan. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Yep. I I know. I know. Probably doesn't feel very good. I know, because last night was a tough one. But I'll tell you what, dude. At least you still got a chance, and it's going to be a solid, solid ending of the season for you guys, man. So, um my hat's off to the Chargers, man. You guys, you guys balled out, and um, it, it's all good, man. Keep your head up, and I'm there. There's brighter days coming. So, with that said, Darren, let's do this thing, brother. So, first things first, man. We have oh, we got someone in the chat. So glad to have you here. Thank you very much, Colin Reynolds, our boy, man. What's going on, Colin? Glad to have you on in here in the chat room as he's uh, 
over there down in the bayou getting himself ready to roll. To, just so you know, Colin, the launch of our brand new New Orleans show, Bayou Bulletin, of course, the Bayou Bulletin with our boy Book is going to launch on Sunday. So I expect you to be all over that show, brother. You might even be a host, a co-host, or a, or, or at least a frequent guest on that show, man. So look forward to having that. Also, a big up to our new Wisconsin show, man, with uh, – our boy Justice, man, great dude, and uh, he's looking forward to starting up as well, coming up in the following week, talking all things Wisconsin, so make sure to catch those two great shows coming on up here in just about a week, one coming up on Sunday and one coming up next week sometime, once again, that, of course, is the Bayou Bulletin with our boy Book and on Wisconsin with Justin McGee getting excited because we're closing in on uh, all of our major sports cities we want to cover here at IE Sports Radio. So we're just growing and doing our thing. So with that said, Taryn, brother, start us off, man. Call the high school, at least here in California, the high school uh, state championships are over with and done. It is finally safe to say that high school football has concluded here in Southern California. But, oh, my goodness, man. Guess what a way to cap it off for, like I said, if they haven't already been uh, called national champions by now, it's inevitable that they will be soon. I don't know when they actually announce that. But uh, modern day absolutely destroys Sarah um, of uh, San Mateo, man, just absolutely eats them alive. Like, what was it, 44 to 7, I believe. As you mentioned, Tom Brady's alma mater. Well, <laughs> Bryce Young's alma mater went ahead and did a number on them. And, if, <laughs> yeah, yeah, real fast. And, well, if that's the deal, Darren, this would be, if I'm not mistaken, all right, and I'm pretty sure you have the correct information here, but this is, like, modern day's third national championship or fourth in the last, like, five years or something like that. I forgot what it was. But, once again, I don't know if they've been named it or not, but, Taryn, with that said, brother, high school going on here in California for the final time this year. Take it away. Yeah, it's looking like Modern Day is going to be the national champion. I mean, the team behind them is Westlake of Texas, that they have a game as well, but that's not going to be until tomorrow, and they play Geyer. I don't think Westlake will be the national champion. I'm not trying to stir anything up, but I don't I don't think their resume is will be as good enough to overtake Modern Day's. You never know, though. Something I do need to make note of when it came to the CIS state championship games was that the Division One, the Open Division, the Division One A, the Division One AA, the Division Two AA, and the Division Two A champion have one thing in common: they all won at Saddleback College, and they're all from the Southern section. They're all from Southern California. Now the champions from. 3AA all the way down to 7A have one thing in common. They're all NorCal teams, and they all got the opportunity to play at home. This just goes to show you, and I don't mean to really say this, but this goes to show you that home field advantage can mean something, can mean quite a lot. I mean, some of these teams did have to come from Los Angeles or other parts of the Southern California section to get to Saddleback College, but when it came to those those teams from Northern California having to travel to from NorCal all the way down to Mission Viejo, South Orange County, just goes to show you that those Southern California teams had a little bit of an advantage. And then some of the Northern California teams, or all the Northern California teams I just mentioned from three A to three or to seven. A or three double eight seven A. They all managed to win on their home field, including Aquinas or uh, including Aquinas' opponent Vanden, who barely edged out Aquinas. I was surprised to see Aquinas losing that one, just because Aquinas has put up a lot of great points, and to be held only thirteen and lose fourteen to thirteen is quite surprising. But you do have to give it up to Vanden and the other NorCal teams. They handled business at home. So I kind of wonder, and this might be a question for you, how many games is too much when it comes to a certain season? Like, I know obviously you get you get a state championship and the, sub, the section playoffs, but 
how much football is too much football? That's just something I would like to pass on to you. That is a very good question, Taryn. Um, you know, okay, so it's kind of funny. When I was in high school playing, <laughs> being naive and just not knowing all the ins and outs of CIF and all of that, all I knew was I was playing football. And I am kind of funny, Taryn. This is actually pretty laughable. Um, playing varsity and just so excited to be on that field and just playing. I idolized USC. You know, so I became such a big fan. I mean, I'm basically a bandwagoner, but when they made that historic run, but I've been a fan ever since. Um, and it's kind of funny. But big up to our boy Marcus Lowe's great in the chat room. What up, what up, what up, no? Have a great show, fellas. Hey, thank you, but thank you for tuning in, man. But this is a great time for you to come in on uh, come on in too, Marcus. Uh, and if you're still listening, Colin. Because this is a great question posed by Taryn here. And the question was, how much football is too much football? At the high school level, at least from what I think he's saying. But high school guys. Okay. I used to think, you know, following USC so closely, following my Raiders, but, you know, following the NFL so closely in high school. You guys. I used to think that there was a giant playoff format that goes on through the country, and then there was an actual national championship just like, you know, well, some kind of like a tournament or something that went on, uh, just like the playoffs of the NFL. I was got I was getting into the BCS, and I was like, what, what the hell is this? Like, oh, there's a, oh, okay, so whoever finishes first and second gets a, okay, I guess, all right, well, that works, all right, and then the bowl, okay, I guess the bowl games are all right, you know, it wasn't until later I started getting into the lower divisions where they actually have the tournaments, which is what the freaking single A should be doing now, but I felt like there was an actual tournament, and then I got older and started to really get more into, like, you know, the ins and outs of it and the tournament of high school and all that, and I always thought there was an actual national championship, I always thought there was an actual game. It's funny to find out that I never did actually figure out, find that game. And I realized later on, a couple years ago, that the national championship, it was hard. The national champions are literally just deemed by who had the best record and who was probably going to, who finished number one overall, I guess. And that was it. Like modern day, they just finished. They played the last game of their season that they're going to play. They won the state championship. Cool. They won state. But according to the rankings, and I guess it's max preps, I don't know. Um, but whoever the heck gives those final rankings, well, whoever finishes number one is the national champions, and that's it. Cool. Okay. There's nothing horrible about that. Okay. But I've always thought how cool it would be to actually see a national championship, you know, a high school national championship game. Even if you went BCS style and just brought the best two together, like right now, if... Uh, Westlake and Austin were to win it. Why not have them and Modern Day go head to head? Is that does that mean um, that Modern Day probably won't do the same exact thing they just did to freaking Sarah? It's a possibility, but does it mean that Sarah that Westlake couldn't freaking rise up and actually upset Modern Day? That could happen as well. But what really is the case is, as you said, Taryn. Now I know I, I went a little far, far there, but. Like, and, yeah, see, like, Terrence is like an AIU for football, okay? Um, yeah, I have to explain real quick, Marcus, my bad. But, realistically, I would love to see something, at least, where there is a, there is a quote-unquote, national type of game. Now, would that mean there's one more game on schedule left for modern day? Yeah. And is that, like, ridiculous, pushing it one more week out, like, right now before Christmas? Yeah, but see, that's where it feeds into too much football. Like, these guys get started in in summer, basically, you know, the very end of August. Then they play the regular season, then their CIF, of course, the regular playoffs for their, for the, um, for their division. Then they play after, if they win that, they move forward, and then they play the regional type of deal where they play, like, for the best of the best in, um, you know, for the Southern section, the, the tournament. Then after you win that tournament, if you win it, the CIF, like, in, at least in California, your section or your region, then you go on to state and you play a game versus somebody else in the state that could or could not be 
you know, the other side of the state. I was a little surprised this year, Taryn, when I saw teams that played each other for quote-unquote state, but they called it 2A something, or this 3A, or whatever, whatever. Um, I don't even know where they're getting these letters from or these numbers. I'm not even sure where that came from. But we're seeing that, and they're like, you know, the two teams who just played really, really well, and then they went head-to-head, um, and they're like, you know, 40 miles apart. And it's like, that's state? Like, you couldn't even do north versus south? Like, you know, oh, we had a couple north versus south, and I guess the big one, the open division is what they call it, is where that's modern day, the north versus the south, or like De La Salle back in the day where the south plays the north. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, what I'm just saying, regardless. But I'm just saying, and then that's the final game, and then we get, what, a national championship? That, that comes on down in December. So, too much football, to me, is having all of that craziness. Um... I I feel like right now, Taryn, honestly, dude, these guys are 17 years old. And am I saying they can't handle it? No, but some of these guys are going to go on to play in the NCAA, and they're going to play long seasons. Some of these guys are going to go on to play in the pros, maybe, and they're going to play. You know, apparently the NFL thinks that, you know, football is this nice, kind sport that doesn't destroy your body after a couple of years. And, you know, they just keep throwing games on the top, and it's just cute to them. They're not the ones out there freaking playing it, whoever the hell made those stupid rules to add more games in the NFL. I digress. But I'm just saying, that's a lot of games. I mean, modern day, if they were to play one more game, that's like, what, 15 games in the season or something like that? You know, I'm not saying anything bad that young men can't handle it of that age, but I'm just saying, my gosh, man, that's a lot of guys on football, and you're trying to break these guys down now, that's a lot, try to keep these guys at least ready to get a freaking scholarship and get free school, so overall, Sarah, the 10-game season's great, but these tournaments, man, like, do we have to have them so big, do we have to have, like, freaking 16 teams or whatever, for, I mean, that's kind of not, and I know it can get kind of biased, but Overall, Taryn, I felt like some of these, like like the open division, like or sorry, the division one, division one for CIF is great. There's only like eight teams, and then they go on and play. And honestly, I kind of feel like that's what it should be. Um, I don't, I don't want to say it's too much football, but the same as that time, it kind of is. But realistically, to find a real national champion, I feel like that's what it should be, Taryn. Um, you know, we should have a regular ten game season. Just a small eight team for your region, you know, um, play for state. And if you win state, the top two teams play for a national. I know that sounds like a lot, but but Marcus has something great here, Taryn. I want to hand the mic over to you, but, but Marcus says here, because we are now seeing teams come to Arizona and play Centennial, Chandler, Hamilton and yeah, see, so there there are some big time schools in Arizona, man, and there, we're we're no stranger to those. I've seen Centennial Corona Centennial right here in the IE play Chandler. Um, I didn't see them, but I know they played like two years ago uh, at San Bernardino Valley College when the fires were going on. They couldn't play out their own field. And that was their home game. Like I remember seeing, or you know, yeah, seeing that on TV. And these teams play each other. They really do, and they're good. But, uh, yeah, it's there's a lot going on when it comes to, um, you know, teams crossing over and playing here, playing there. So Marcus says, I would like to see the best of Texas, California, Arizona figure something out. Yeah, that would be cool. I would love to see that too, man. There's lots of big powerhouse high schools in these region, in these states, and um, I, I really feel like that would be cool too. I mean, but once again, I guess – Overall, the long, gigantic way to answer your question, Darren, was all of that. My apologies. But, but um, you know, if we can keep these CIF, like, I honestly kind of feel like right now it's it's okay. Um, I'm going to retract a little bit and say that I guess the bigger tournaments for CIF is okay because all oh, they're going to go on to a state, and depending on whoever they play, I feel like CIF is kind of okay. Regardless of like, and don't get me wrong, I love that Arlington went all the way, almost winning a freaking state title and everything. But still, winning three games in the entire season or the regular season or two games or whatever—that's ridiculous. I'm sorry, I don't know how the hell that got figured out. Um, congratulations to Arlington, but you don't get rewarded for winning two games in the season in a regular season, in my opinion. But whatever. Regardless, I feel like. At least the tournaments, they got it right. You know, there's big tournaments for the lower divisions, and then they have state. 
realistically, they're not going on to anything national. And they're keeping the open division small, so there's not a big tournament for the for the open division, for the division one teams. So they can actually compete for state for a national championship. So honestly, Terry, I kind of felt like it, it kind of works. I mean, how many games is that? Ten regular season games. And then they have the open division where they went they one, two, three, there's three games, so that's thirteen games. And then they have state, which is fourteen games. And then a national championship, that's 15 games. I mean, honestly, with what they're doing in the NFL right now, with all these stupid extra games, I know it's just one I keep complaining about, but I don't care. Might as well get them ready because, hey, in the NCAA, they're going to play 12 regular seasons. Um, and then they're going to probably end up playing uh, if they go to a bowl game or something. So they'll be close to that. And then if they if these guys end up doing, you know, somebody does go to the NFL, I mean, at least they'll be – Ready for it. So, I don't know, Taryn, that was a long, gigantic answer, but what do you think about that, brother? Yeah, I think some are saying that the season should be shortened. Some are saying that the season should be expanded. Like, it was just something that kind of crossed my mind because you, in a traditional format or in a perfect world, the standard California team gets 10 regular season games, mm-hmm. and then they get – and then if they go all the way to the Southern Section Championship, they're guaranteed four. And then once you reach the SoCal Regionals, that's 15. And then 16 is the state championship. So that's kind of the reason why I informed it. And to answer your question about Arlington, so Arlington did finish 2-8, and eight, but they tied for third in their league. And apparently they won their tiebreaker as I guess that their name was drawn from a hat and then they were given the third place designation as the top three teams in their league make the postseason, and they were the lucky ones to make it. So they were able to make it as a top three team and not as an at large, and that's how they were able to go all the way. And the system is a little flawed when it comes to some of these, what you might call it, these, these at large teams or some of these teams that were placed in a certain division via Cal preps, but again, it's something that CIS is probably going to look into and will probably get fixed or at least modified. Like, it's a one-year process. Like, we can't get too drawn up in this. Like, it's either that or we go back to the division placement that's before the season starts and then we go from there. No, I agree. And you know what, Aaron? Honestly, dude, there's a lot of ways to go about this, but I like what I, I really do like right now what Marcus said because yeah, these states are really powerhouses, and it'd be nice to see some kind of like little like at least some kind of bowl game. That'd be kind of cool to see that. But but overall, Tim, when it comes down to a national championship, I feel like right now with the big ones, they have it right. You know, screw it. Ten game regular season, three games for CAF. I mean, let's just be real. These schools are <sighs> okay. Some are recruiting, some aren't, quote unquote. But I mean, I'm not trying to, you know, draw no heat or none of that. But and I mean, I guess I can say recruiting isn't necessarily a bad. Okay, recruiting is loose—a term that is loosely used because with schools like Corona Centennial or like Norco, you know, at the end of the day, you know, really, they don't even have to recruit. Guys just want to play for them, so families will move over there, so they get these great players. So I guess I can 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 cancel that out. I never really made the accusation that they recruited. I'm just saying that you know they get good players. That's that's how I'm going to say it because it's true. They get good players because players good players want to go play for those coaches in those or in those programs, and that's awesome. So with that said, uh, other teams, of course, that do recruit, like the private schools that can, like Water did. Um, why not? We know these guys are special, and they're probably going to go on and play at least in some, you know, one of the lower levels of the NCAA. Um, Some of them may go on to the higher levels of the NCAA, and let's just be real. There is a small handful, a very small handful. Oh, well, some stuff went kaboom over here in the the house, but, uh, you know, um, it's crazy to think that some of these guys, a handful of all of the private schools around the country, are actually going to go to the NFL. You know, how far will they get in the NFL? We don't know because, as we know, the NFL, those three letters stand for not for long, which is really sad, but it's true. However, how many of these guys will get there? How many of them will actually become Hall of Famers one day? We'll see. But 
why not, Taryn? Why not just make that make it to where you know the the uh, how we have it now? I mean, you get all those games. You know, the open division is only eight teams. You know, and they play three games to get to the end and, and win it, and then they have the state. And then if you win state, you win. It, you play the national. I mean. I know it sounds crazy, but maybe, and to shorten it up, maybe, Taryn, like modern day and Corona Centennial and all them, it's going to sound crazy, but if it's going to happen like that, one small tweak, and maybe Marcus would like this too, Taryn, why not, instead of playing like, you know, modern day playing like teams like, I don't know, this year, I know they they probably played some schools that were like, wow, or like the Trinity League. I don't really know who's all in there, of course, I know you know that, because they're, um, you know, Orange County, over there where you're at, but Taryn, why don't we just kind of, I don't know, like, I don't want to say do away with those, well, I guess I kind of am saying do away with the leagues, but remove those teams, kind of like how the, how, like, the soccer teams wanted to do in Europe not too long ago, with, like, that Super 6 thing, but make bigger school, like, you know, in the area, like, you know, make, like, freaking the big schools, like Corona Centennial and freaking, um, I don't know, like, those big schools that are usually in the playoffs, why don't they just play in the regular season? All of them, like, clump together in a big in a big league and then have a smaller playoff, maybe, and then have a state title and then have a national. I mean, you could probably cut it down to, like, maybe 12, 13 games with that, and they would only play, like, maybe eight regular season games. I'm just saying, like, I don't know, but those are just kind of ways. If it's, quote-unquote, too much football, there's ways to cut it down. But then again, who knows? Maybe that idea wouldn't be so, uh, you know, maybe that idea wouldn't be so popular. I don't know, Taryn. That's, that's my last proposition for that. What do you think? Yeah, I think possibly shortening the season would be essential. And then, obviously, maybe CIS CI doesn't allow this rule of teams Allowing certain, I think I think it's certain sports that can't allow your team to travel out of state. As it is a little unfair, but I think they should just get rid of that rule and just allow teams to like travel out of state to face certain opponents like Texas or Florida or any of that sort. So I understand it, it's student first, then athlete, but still, I think. We could finally find out who the real national champion is if we let if we let uh, these teams from California travel to face other nationally ranked teams. So we'll we'll see we'll see if uh, this gets like resolved or whatnot. No, I'm with it, dude. I'm totally with it. And um, I, I would it would be cool to see that. I did not know there were rules against that, but yeah, why not, dude? I mean, hey, if we have like you know modern day. And, um, I don't know, like, modern day and, like, Centennial and all those play in the regular season. Then, in the playoffs, I don't know. I mean, my goodness, like, the uh, state, I don't know, I guess. But then, I don't know, it, it might be regions at that point in time. Just cut up the cut up the USA into two pieces, east and west, and then have a playoff for that. If you win your league, you win state because they're all the best in your state that you play in the regular season. So I guess you won state by, I mean, I don't know. It'd be kind of crazy, but however they want to dice it up, it works. Right now, I like it. I think it's okay where it's at. Um, but maybe just adding a national championship game would be great. But, and that's probably too much football, but I don't know. But you're absolutely right, Terry. We'll, we'll find ways to dice it up. But with that said, the unofficial champion, uh, we'll announce that on upcoming week for sure. But we're sure, at least in my opinion, I'm pretty darn sure that the, well, at least the official champion will probably be modern day. I mean, as you said, Taryn, there's, I really don't see how they wouldn't win this thing, but I'm pretty sure they will. So, um, with that said, Taryn, let's go ahead and move into the Triple CAA. Gosh damn it, Taryn. I watched this game last week, and pissed off is not the word. Uh, I'm not going to diss San Francisco. They played well. But RCC, man, I mean, my goodness, there were just, there were some very questionable calls, in my opinion. There were some some just bonehead mistakes. Um, the moment was not too big for RCC, because that moment was already there two years ago, when, when we beat San Mateo. Um, but, at the end of the day, Frisco played, and they played well. They played their game. 
I feel like RCC slipped up. They they made too many stupid mistakes, and you can see why they were ten and two going into this game. You can see those mistakes because, my goodness, like that defensive line was amazing for for the Rams. But golly, man, I mean, <laughs> it, it just boggles my mind how this explosive offense couldn't couldn't capitalize sometimes and it bothered me it really did I was like gosh damn it like are you serious but and then of course our defense I'm just gonna be real that that offense was strong but that defense it, when it was crunch time man it, it it when it was crunch time when it really mattered the defense I will say kind of folded um it was a rough game it was a very rough game and I was so disappointed uh, with the outcome. However, I do got to say, though, man, oh, my gosh. There was a play in this game that was absolutely incredible. Not a play, but a, uh, I guess you can say a play. <laughs> but, man, there was a kick. I don't know if you guys see the game, Darren, but, oh, my gosh. Um, the freaking kick. Like heard around the state, as they were saying, uh, amazing stuff here. It was like a freaking sixty, if I'm not mistaken, or not like a, I don't know. It was like in the sixties, I think, or something like that. But this freaking, oh here it is. Uh, I'm reading this here, courtesy of CCSF Athletics, of course. Here, um, it is on their website at CCSF dot. Presto Sports or Presto Sports, P R E S T O S P O R T S dot com. But yeah, uh, crazy man. Ricardo Chavez would nail a fifty-nine freaking yard field goal, and it was a doink, but he doinked it off the crossbar, and it went in. Man, um, as the half ended, Riverside led ten to seven. However, in the second half. We folded, and I hate to say it, I'm not going to sit here and bash Frisco because they played very good, and they earned every bit of that championship. There's nothing wrong with them. It just irritated me that Riverside couldn't capitalize in the big moments. Does that mean that Frisco played well? I mean, didn't play good enough? That that the Rams didn't play well enough? That San Francisco didn't play well enough uh, to make it happen? They did, and they, they, they shut Riverside down in those big moments. I just feel like Riverside... It could have been the other way around, and that's just being a biased Tiger. I'm sorry, but I seriously felt like there were moments that RCC with a little extra umph could have done it. So anyway, final score in this game, 22-19. Congratulations, of course, and this is not being salty whatsoever. I will give them their full props. Ladies and gentlemen, congratulations to the 2021 Triple C Double A National Champions, the or call uh, sorry City College of San Francisco, earning their first national championship since 2015, and this is their eighth in program history. So they look strong, they look good, and uh, yeah, they they played really well. So, Darren, what you got, man? Yeah, that game right there. The the Riverside was actually playing great through three quarters. It's just that the fourth quarter, San Francisco eventually scored early, and then my thing was is that the San Francisco went for touchdowns, and this is no knock on Riverside. Uh, Riverside eventually just settled in for field goals. I don't know where exactly they were in terms of that third quarter or how they were able to possibly maybe get a little closer. But all in all, Riverside played a great game. It's just that San Francisco just surged in the fourth quarter, and that 59-yard field goal was indeed impressive. So I think the turning point might have been toward the end of the third quarter where San Francisco was driving, and eventually they got that first touchdown in the fourth quarter, and that gave them the lead, and then... Unfortunately for Riverside, missing out on the two-point conversion did not help matters. And I think if they make that two-point conversion, it's now a 21-14 to lead. And then San Francisco most likely goes for the touchdown, then the extra point. And then 
it's decided maybe in overtime. So a lot of different storylines could be added into that if they complete that two-point conversion. But all in all, a great season for Riverside. But do got to give my props to College of San Francisco. It was a good game, Taryn. And like I said, as disappointed as I, can, as disappointed as I am, um, it is what it is, and that's it. That's how the chips fell, and that's how that game ended. And that's no knock on the Rams, man. The Rams won that game. Barons were. They played good football. I guess, once again, just felt like Riverside could have done a little more. Um, but regardless, that's how the season ended. And that's it. So it's a bummer. I'm uh, still irritated about the result, but it is what it is, you know. And uh, I guess, I don't know. <laughs> the reason why I guess I'm so irritated with it, too, is because, you know, I can sit here and be like, oh, the Raiders, or oh, USC, or oh, like any of these teams. I don't know, Taryn, I feel like it's a little different when you actually wore the jersey. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> Yeah. You know? like Yeah, I, and you always love to expect, you always got to expect greatness and wins to come out of your team. Exactly. So, I understand your pain. Yeah, dude, like, it's crazy. Like, I played there. You know what I mean? Like, it's it's a little tougher, because it's like they're in the family. You know what I mean? Like, it's a, it's a fraternity. Of guys, mm-hmm. and it's like though I may not even know any of these guys, I, you know I'm going to be 50 years old one day and still cheering on RCC as if they were the guys I play with on the field and, and and holding them to the same expectations that I held my guys to when I played back then. You know what I mean? Like it's just, it's just funny, right? <laughs> so, yep, I, I totally feel the same way with you. Yeah, man. So good, good game, and you know what, man. Hats off to RCC on a hell of a season. Losing to Golden West this year, I didn't even know if we were going to get there, man. I didn't know if we were going to get to the National Championship. That's why I was surprised when they even saw us there. I was so dang busy this year, I didn't even get a chance to pay attention to as much as I wanted to. But anyway, it's Aaron. All right, brother. It's about that time to switch it on over into a little bit of Stag Bowl, man. Into the uh, NCAA Division three, Taryn, brother, this is, this is crazy. <laughs> we have ourselves a good football game coming to us today, man. I don't know if you've been following it as closely as I have. Um, I'm sure you have, but I know you're a busy guy too, man. You do a million things in one, just like I do. But dude, this is going to be magical. Um, we have ourselves, of course, tonight's game is going to be awesome, and, well, I can't wait to get on to it. But before we do that, we're going to give ourselves a quick commercial break, and when we get back, we'll be talking about that stag bowl going on tonight, 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern. You're listening to 3 and Out, Calls Edition, right here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. We'll be right back after this. Ladies and gentlemen, hear me and hear me good. If you like sports, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like comedy, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. If you like a different opinion coming from a different angle, then you like the Wait a Minute Show. So join me Saturday, 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time with your host, Jelani J.B. Bodie, and of course, my man Lopan on the Wait a Minute Show.com. Ain't that right, Lopan? What's happening, sports fans? Are you a fan of Southern California sports? Are you looking for a show hotter than a hot summer day in California? Then look no further than the SoCal Supreme Sports Show, where I talk about all things Southern California sports. That's right, all sports teams from Southern California. From the hard-hitting tackles of the NFL, to the killer crossovers and big three-pointers of the NBA and WNBA, to the grand slams of the MLB, to the bone-chilling goals of the NHL, and to the booming kicks of the MLS, the SoCal Supreme Sports Show has it all for you. Oh, and let us not forget about the college sports as well. So join me, Taryn Rodriguez, every week here on IE Sports Radio, your direct feed for all that is sports. 
That is right, y'all. Your review for all that is sports. I told you we'd be right back. We're taking a quick little break. Show some love, you know, to some of our shows and get that out there. Big up to our boys and mom and kids. It's a way to finish the show. Of course. It's so Cal Spirits for y'all. Get showing some love once again. Get some shows around our, you know, uh, around our network and other great shows you can catch out there. But, of course, we are right back bringing it to you, y'all. This is going to be a crazy game tonight, man. So, first and foremost, Taryn. Uh, tonight, of course, we have quite the game, <clears throat> because I don't even know how to introduce this damn game, man, but it is going to be a whole bunch of fun, and why is that? Well, first things first, because Division 3 is freaking awesome. Some people just don't realize it. I don't know how people overlook Division 3, and because... Damn it, it's great football. I mean, my goodness, it's great football. And I, I certainly enjoy every bit of it. And, uh, well, tonight we got ourselves quite uh, the matchup, y'all, as we get ready and set for. Hold on, really quick. <laughs> Getting ready for, uh, I'm trying to uh, change around the freaking Roman numerals. Here we go. Stag Bowl 48 in the house tonight. My goodness, I can't believe it's that many. <laughs> but getting ready and set for this game here as we have two teams that are not Mountain Union. <laughs> or Wisconsin Whitewater. Or Wisconsin Oshkosh. Or I'm just saying, this is pretty freaking cool tonight, y'all. We have ourselves one heck of a football game as the defending champions, North Central, Take on champions before them, <laughs> Mary Harden Baylor. All right, so the 13 and 0 Cardinals of North Central will be taking on the 14 and 0 uh, Crusaders, and well, this is going to be awesome. The game has been changed. It used to be every year in Virginia. Then they moved it around. And it got changed around to Texas one year. That was pretty cool. This year, it has moved around to Canton, Ohio. Crazy enough, this would have been a, basically a home game for Mount Union, but it was not to be. And the Cardinals, man. So, so first things first, let's recap this, Taryn. Let's recap both of these two uh, semifinals last year. Oh, sorry, last week. As we have here... Mary Harden Baylor just knocking off Wisconsin Whitewater 24 to 7 and then we had North Central defeating Mount Union 26 to 13 dude the, I I really had Mount Union man I thought they were going to knock off cuz North Central was amazing like I said they won it all a couple years ago they did great there was no tournament in 2020 but they're the defending champions of course and I'm not trying to write off the defending champions but it's Mount Union However, Mount Union will have another uh, another struggle, unfortunately, uh, deep in the playoffs, and they will fall yet again. Mary Harden Baylor, however, a team that's recently been in this championship uh, pretty well in the last couple of years, well, they would knock off the Warhawks, I believe, or, or War Eagles, and one of <laughs> I forgot what they are, my bad, of Wisconsin Whitewater, and freaking crap, man. Mary Harden Baylor, 24-7, to heads on in, and now here they go tonight. 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern, getting ready to rock and roll. Taryn, what do you think about these uh, two semifinals, man? Yeah, I thought both semifinals were very interesting, to say the least. And Mary Hart and Baylor in that defense really shined. And North Central proved why they're the, they're the defending champs. And I'm excited for this Mary Hart and Baylor. It's basically the champions of last year versus the champions of past. And it's going to have a lot of great storylines and I look forward to it. I want to say Mary Harden Baylor is going to win just because that defense of theirs has been balling out. They have held they, their opponents have yet to crack double digits in this tournament. As the first round, they only gave up three. Second round, or they only gave up seven. Uh, I forgot. Oh yeah, and Linfield, I forgot. Uh, they gave up twenty-four too, but they made up for that in the terms of points. So. Other than that quarterfinal matchup where they gave up 24 points to Linfield, they haven't really allowed too many big explosive point totals. So then you look at Mount Union, the reigning champions. They had a little trouble against Johns Hopkins, but they were able – oh, I'm sorry, that's not Mount 
Union. Uh, North Central, <laughs> North Central, they've had their ups and downs. Uh, obviously, their first round, they didn't have a contest. Then they beat Wisconsin Lacrosse, and then they beat Rensselaer. So we'll see if North Central's defense can hold up against the offense that is Mary Hart Baylor and vice versa. I think it could be a defensive battle. I would not be surprised if this was a low-scoring affair, and I think you would love that as well. Taryn, you're speaking my language, brother. You know how it goes, man. I would love me some defensive football tonight in this one. But uh, we shall see, man. I am really excited for this one. It's going to be a great one. I'll read a quick little article for you guys. This is courtesy of the repository and written by Mark or Mike Popovich uh, at 6.02 a.m. Eastern on December 16th, 2021, yesterday. And really fast, Aaron, uh, this says here, A year later than planned, Canton welcomes the, uh, the Amos Alonzo Stag Bowl on Friday. North Central 13-0 will meet Mary Harden Baylor at 14-0 for the NCAA Division III Football National Championship Friday at Tom Benson Hall of Fame Stadium. Kickoff is at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, of course. The 2020 Stag Bowl was originally scheduled to be played in Canton, Ohio. It was canceled when NCAA eliminated last year's Division III Fall Championships because of COVID. There are uh, here are a, a, a sorry here are five thoughts about this year's game. Will they come without playing Mount Union? This is interesting, Taryn. There's no doubt about Friday's game would have uh, attracted many more fans if Mount Union beat North Central. Absolutely. The Purple Raiders always had a strong stag bowl following when the game was played six hours away in Salem, Virginia. How the area embraces the game, no matter the opponent, will dictate its long-term future here. Benson Stadium will also stack bowl again in 2025. After that, there are no guarantees. Salem held held on to stag bowl from 1993 through 2017. They will host it again in 2023, the game's 50th anniversary season. Two hopeful dynasty builders. Okay, North Central and Mary Hart and Baylor are no one-hit wonders when it comes to Division Three football. Uh, North Central is the defending champion. The Cardinals will try to become the first team to win back-to-back stag, pool, uh, stag bowls since Wisconsin Whitewater did in 2013 and 14. Mayor Hart and Baylor went to three straight stag bowls from 16 to 18. And the Crusaders beat Wisconsin Oshkosh in 16, lost to Mount Union in 17, and defeated Mount Union in 18. The 2016 championship was vacated due to an NCAA infraction. So it says, big week for uh, Gagliardi Trophy finalists. Many Stag Bulls have included a finalist for the Gagliardi Trophy presented annually to the NCAA's most outstanding player. This year's game will have two finalists. Jefferson Fritz is an I is an all-everything player from Mayor Harden Baylor. As a safety, he ranks third on the team tackles in uh, with 62 and is tied for... The team lead with eight passes broken up. He also averages 40, four, uh, sorry, 40 yards a punt and is one of Mary Harden Baylor's featured punt returners. Andrew uh, Kaminsky, I believe, leads North Central in receiving with six, seven catches for 1,150 yards. He also is second team, uh, second, sorry, second on team with 11 touchdown catches. Uh, the other Gagliardi Trophy finalists are Central College quarterback Blaine Hawkins, Linfield quarterback Wyatt Smith, and Aurora quarterback Gavin Zimbelman. The winner will be announced Friday before before today's game. So that was actually that's going to be announced tonight. Cool. So can anyone slow down Ethan Greenfield? North Central running back Ethan Greenfield's previous two games played in Stark County were very successful. Greenville ran for. 130 yards and scored two touchdowns in the Cardinals' 59-52 second round win at Mount Union in 2019. In Saturday's 2006, uh, sorry, in, in Saturday's 26-13 semifinal win over the Purple Raiders, he rushed for 190 yards. Taryn, few teams have slowed Greenfield this season. He has rushed for 16, almost 1,700 yards, uh, 1688, <clears throat> 1,688 yards, and 12 touchdowns in 12 games in three playoff games. He has rushed for 531 yards and four touchdowns. 
freaking crap, Taryn. That's crazy. And then finally, who bends and who ends up breaking? North Central averages 54.8 points and allows 100, oh, sorry, and allows 11.2 games, points a game, sorry. Uh, Mary Harden Baylor averages 48.3 points and gives up nine, uh, nine points a contest around there. Uh, if defense wins championships, the better the better one in this game will really have helped their team to earn it. And once again, that is courtesy of the repository written by Mike Popovich. So, Taryn, what do you take from all that, dude? Well, all in all, that's that's rather that's crazy, man. That, that's rather mind blowing, honestly. And I really cannot wait for 4 p.m. to roll around. I really think it's going to be a fun little final, and I hope we can get ourselves a great game. I just don't want it to be a blowout. Like, there's yeah. nothing worse than seeing a blowout in a championship game. Like, it would just suck. Like, I think I speak for everybody that everyone wants to see a competitive game. I'm with you, Taryn. So, let's get ready for that one. That's going to be a great fight here tonight. Uh, Snag Bowl 48 getting ready and set for you, y'all. With that said, Taryn, you know what time it is, brother. Final score time. This is the pick 'em. Will the Crusaders get it going? Can they slow down Greenville, dude? Can they do it? Or will this tough North Central team repeat as champions and make it happen? I mean, it's incredible. We have two players that are in the finals for the Gagliardi Trophy, which, of course, is like the Heisman of Division Three. Jefferson Fritz. Um, uh, he, he's a safety, he's amazing, he's been playing great, he's a part returner apparently, um, on one side playing for Mary Harden Baylor, on the other side, like I said, Ethan Greenfield's a beast, and they also have, um, who else is, uh, oh, Kaminsky in North, in North Central, he's a receiver, I'm just saying, there's so many variables in this one, dude, but with all that said, Taryn, final score and why? So for Mary Harden Baylor and North Central, uh, I will take. I'll take Mary Harden Baylor winning twenty to seventeen. And again, I think it's going to be a defensive out. I would. I wanted to make the score a little bit less, but I think it'll be some points scored. But I will say it's going to be low scoring. It's going to be decided by one score. Well, Taryn, Mary Harden Baylor is a very good football team, but dang it, Taryn, we're already going opposites, man. Wouldn't you know it? Taryn and I going opposites. Okay, Mary Harden Baylor's solid, dude. They're solid. They're a very good football team. But I feel like after last week playing Mount Union, dude, they already they're already blowing up inside, man. They defeated a team that is so 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 rich in this tournament. They have just done so much in these since 1993. Uh, uh, freaking Mount Union has won like seriously. Um, a crap load. I don't even know how many they won, but they won plenty. At the end of the day, dude, I want to give it – I want to say that Mary Harden Baylor can actually get this thing done because that defense is so solid. But you know what, man? I've heard enough. The running back, I heard he's – a. you know, you, you see he's a tough dude, this Kaminsky cat. Dude, I'm going Cardinals in this one, man. I'm going to go final score on this one. I'm actually going to go a little higher than I want to, but I'm going to say 28-21. I'd love for there to be more defense, but there's a possibility these offenses might want to match it. And, dude, I'm all with it. I think it's going to be a good game. I'm going final score 28-21 Cardinals. So there you have it, y'all. Taryn, write those down, dude. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, let's get excited, man. We're going to have some fun, and tonight's game is going to be a good one, Taryn. So I'll be tweeting with you, brother. Got it. Yep. So, all right, Taryn. Well, we're moving on now into the NJCAA National Championship coming up tonight, or sorry, tomorrow as well, as we have a pretty good game here. Number two, New Mexico Military takes on number one, Iowa Western. It is at War Memorial Stadium in Little Rock, Arkansas. And this is it, man. This is it for all the marbles. I mean, both of these teams played very well in the last couple of weeks. Uh, really, man. This is the two weeks, of course, in the making. Both these teams played in the semifinals on Saturday the 4th. Iowa Western defeated Snow by 1.30 to 29. Iowa Western would move on on Sunday the 5th. North, uh, sorry, New Mexico Inst the Military Institute will defeat 
Northwest Mississippi, 49 to 30. And well, here we are tonight, man, as we are all ready and set on this beautiful Friday evening. Game is scheduled for 5 8 p.m. Eastern, 5 p.m. Pacific time. And well, here we go, man. New Mexico versus Iowa Western. What do you think about this game, Darren? Oh, well, uh, uh, NJCAA. Yeah, we're going. Um, sorry. <laughs> we're going all over the place. Yeah, the, for the semifinals for the NJCAA, um, Iowa Western had to grind it out on Saturday against Snow. And I was very surprised that they had to win that one in overtime. Against New Mexico military, I'm surprised that one got played on a Sunday. Maybe because they had to postpone it due to certain circumstances. But New Mexico military, they basically rolled to victory. Their offense was clicking all over the place, and I don't know. I think this one could boil down to who makes the fewest mistakes and who scores early and often, and. I don't know who to lean toward. I want to say New Mexico military could get the job done, but Iowa Western looks compelling. Uh, it's, just, it's just so tough to pick. It's exciting, and it's one versus two. No people want to see upsets galore, but nothing's better than one versus two, in my opinion. I agree, it's Aaron. This is this is a great game here today. Um, really fast, brother. It says here, courtesy of. Of course, a uh, really cool little preview here. Courtesy of Council Bluffs, Iowa. It says here, courtesy of IWCC uh, Presto Sports. Dot, dot Presto Sports. Dot com. Uh, realistically, there's a giant article here that I'm not going to read. I would love to, but that's just too much. Uh, but but realistically, this is probably my goodness. It's cool because they both have it. Oh yeah. So okay. So let me read this a little bit here. Um, Number one, Iowa Western outlasts it. Okay, so no. Uh, okay, here we go. Number one, Iowa Western outlasted the Badgers. Um, the 2020 National Championship runners up. 30-29 to 29, 30 in an overtime thriller that earned a chance, or to earn a chance at the national title. The Reavers, I believe, uh, hold up or hold the top ranking in the NJCAA Division One ranks during the final weeks of the season, of the regular season, of course, improved to 10-0 on Saturday and looked to finish the fall campaign with an unblemished record. Historically, in the in the postseason play, Iowa Western averages 36.4 points per game, paired with 371.8 yards. The program's last and lone championship title came in 2012 over Butler, Kansas. Number two, New Mexico military came out victorious and made history in its 49 to 30 victory against number 3 Northwest Mississippi, the Broncos are 11 and 0 heading into the championship uh, for their first time in program history and look to capture their first title. New Mexico leads the nat the nation in in rushing. Wow, Taryn, 3494 yards and scoring with 3 with 495, man. Never playing in a national championship before or a football national championship until now, the undefeated 1958 Bronco team came close, finishing atop of the rankings at number one in the country. Taryn, wow, dude, that's crazy. What? Get, that's a that's a hardcore rushing attack, man. Yeah, I yeah. Now I feel a lot compelled to pick New Mexico military. I think that ground game is going to be really huge. However, they do need to maintain a balanced diet when it comes to their offense. They can't just run all run 85% and then just throw it 15%. It doesn't work like that. <laughs> As San Diego State learned that the hard way, I digress on that. Huh. But honestly, that run game is really impressive, and I really want to see how it pans out in this championship game. Taryn, looks like we're going to be going the same here, brother. I, I'm not going to bash on Iowa Western. They're, they seem like a good football team. But, dude, I'm sorry. New Mexico Military Institute has got to be my pick here today. <laughs> they've never won one, dude. This is the first time in history they've come this far. They look like a solid football team. That Russian attack is awesome. Dude, I'm going to call it, man. I'm going to say final score. Darren, do you know what my final score is? 24-21. 24-21. I'm going New Mexico Military Institute. What you doing, dude? What you taking? How you taking it? Uh, I'll... You take this one 
31-28. Oh, man, it should be a good football game. I'm not going to say, we're, 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 neither of us are saying that it's going to be a blowout by any means, but I just feel like New Mexico military will edge it out, man. What do you think? Yeah, I think it, it will be rather, uh, it'll be a great game. I think it's going to be a chess match, and I think it could go either way. And it's just tough. I think it could be a little low scoring in the first half, and then the offenses will pick it up especially after a one-week bye. So, that's my thing. Well, I'm right there with you, Taryn, and this is going to be a good one, brother. So, with that said, man, that's going to do it for the, that game right there. It looks like we're both taking the same team in this one. So, it should be awesome. By the way, we're just getting underway in, uh, well, we're just getting underway. That's right, y'all. The Bahamas Bowl is officially underway. Uh, pretty crazy, man. This game should be a fun one, uh, being played at Thomas A. Robinson National Stadium. So, looks like this one, yeah, this one is underway, y'all. So, here we go as we get ready and set. Mid-Tennessee and Toledo getting ready to roll. But let's go ahead and get through these last couple ones real quick, Terrence. So, with that said, man, we have the NGCAA Championship. That is uh, tonight as well. Stag Bowl. Last but not least, we have two more championships to cover to get through really, really fast, by the way. And, uh, well, let's do this, man. So, next up, we have the NCAA Division II Football Championship. And that is going on tomorrow as well. This another solid football game. Of course, coming our way last week in the semifinals. <clears throat> we'll get to these ones pretty quick, guys. But uh, last week in the semifinals, man, Ferris will knock off Shepard, man, 55-7, to just handedly winning this one. Valdosta State struggled with School of Mines. What a very good game that was. However, tough go for School of Mines. Valdosta will head on back to the National Championship. And there we go, Ferris State versus Valdosta State coming up tomorrow. This game will be played at noontime uh, here in the Pacific, 3 p.m. E uh, Eastern time. This looks to be a good one, man. So uh, what, what, do you, what do you think about this game, man? Yeah, it's going to be a great game. I'm just wondering where the heck Valdosta State got that defense from because yeah. in the previous two rounds, well, obviously Fair State had a bye, but in the quarter for the second round and then the quarterfinals, they gave up 20 points to each of their opponents. And then in the semifinals, they only gave up seven to Shepard, which kind of makes you wonder – Maybe Shepard wasn't on the level of their state. I know Shepard did pull off the upset win over Cutstown, and then they eventually beat Notre Dame of Ohio. So, all in all, I think maybe the comeback magic just fell a little short for Shepard. And then you look at Valdosta State, they barely edged out Colorado School of Mines, and I'm, I, it's, the, it's basically the battle of the one seed. And I look forward to uh, seeing which one, well, one seed in their region, of course. But uh, I look forward to seeing both of these teams just duke it out. I think it could be the the storyline could probably be can Fair State's defense rise to the occasion. I agree, Taryn. And well, I just thought about something. My apologies. I know um, we both you know we got to get going pretty soon here in a few minutes. Uh, silly me, Taryn. I forgot we have another show tomorrow, at eight o'clock. <laughs> so, yes, we do. So, with that said, man. Uh, we're just going to cap it real fast, and those are the games coming up today. Once again, the uh, NCAA three uh, Division three Stag Bowl, of course, Stag Bowl 48 going on, and then, of course, the NJCAA National Championship going on. So, in the last few minutes here, we've got about six minutes left in this show. Taryn, the Bahamas Bowl is officially underway, and, of course, later on today, we have the Tail Greeter Cure Bowl between... Northern Illinois and Coast Carolina. Let's get into some D1, shall we? Taryn, what's going on, brother? How are you feeling about this Bahamas game today? Um, I'm thinking Toledo wins this one. I'm thinking Toledo pulls out the win. I think it'll be a close one, but I got Toledo winning. Absolutely, man. Um, <clears throat> Toledo, mid-10 state, the Blue Raiders are a good team. At least I think they're Blue Raiders, but um, they look very solid. However, I hate to say this, but I'm going to go by the record, man. Seriously, this is a good football game. I mean, a good football team. They did enough to be bowl eligible, but Toledo, I feel like, has a little extra umph in them. And I'm going to go in this game. 
Uh, Toledo to win this one as well. Uh, no scores, but I'm just going to do the same thing with Taryn. I'm going to side with Taryn on this one and take Toledo to win this football game here today. Once again, kickoff just got underway. By the way, we're right after this show. Head on over to USRN, man, on Mixler, USRN. Check them out. They'll be calling this game and, of course, the other one later on today, the Cure Bowl. But uh, got to show them some love, man. They're already officially underway. So, Taryn, for Northern Illinois and Coast Carolina. Coast Carolina having a magical season last year, going strong, going really, really well. They have, they're at 10-2 this year. Northern Illinois, though, the Huskies are a pretty solid team themselves, finishing at 9-4. and four. In my opinion, this will probably be a much better game than the Bahamas Bowl. That's no knock on the Bahamas Bowl. I'm pretty sure it's going to be good, too. But these two teams, a little more solid, a little better records. Um, it's going to get underway. Actually, kind of crazy. Coast Carolina is favored by 11 points. That game is getting underway at 3 p.m. Pacific time, 6 p.m. Eastern, come, coming up today. Taryn, who you got? Yeah, I'm going to pick Coastal Carolina. I mean, it's great to see Northern Illinois back to being – amazing or not amazing but at least like over 500 or super competitive but yeah. i think coastal carolina is kind of in another class of their own well in terms of like non-power fives i'm not trying to say they're <laughs> over, overpowered but you know what i mean absolutely Terry. um Courtesy of the ESPN Scorching Wrap, where I'm getting some of my, where I got, of course, some of my stuff from the last game for the Bahamas Bowl as well. But for this game for the Cure Bowl, yeah, man, McCall looking good. 150 for two, uh, 211 on the season. He's at 20, 2,558 yards. He's throwing three, 23 touchdowns, three interceptions, however. But, dude, look at his, his, his supporting cast, man. Jones has 151 carries, 988 yards on the ground, 30 touchdowns. And Halai, I believe I want to picture his name. H e i l i g h, but fifty nine receptions, a thousand thirty four yards, seven touchdowns. At the end of the day, I don't want to diss Northern Illinois. They got some great athletes on their side too, but we're in time crunch right now, so I can't necessarily name all the, those off. But I, I, that's my winner as well. I'm going to go Coast Carolina to win this thing here today. Uh, and, and what should be a good game. But be ready, y'all. Tomorrow we got one, two, three, four, five, six bowl games to get to. We also got the NAIA National Championship coming up tomorrow. We have, as we get started, talking about the NCAA Division II Championship coming up. So many good things coming up tomorrow. We have the Toilet Bowl, Raiders versus the Browns. <laughs> I'm sorry, <Terry>. <laughs> 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 that was a good one. That was a good one. <laughs> oh, oh, oh my dude, I'm oh. sorry. I'm sorry. I just, I had to. I had to throw that one in there. That game is so crap. Like, just cancel it. Oh my gosh. Like the, Ra the Raiders oh are the worst God. team on the face of the earth. Oh I'm sorry. They're my team. I can say that all I want to. They freaking suck something awful. All right. And and the Browns are dropping like flies, unfortunately. There's injuries and unfortunately COVID's still very serious around the world right now. You got guys on COVID protocol. You got guys that are hurt. You got teams that just don't care to play football anymore like the Raiders. I'm just saying, like, you got all kinds of crap going on. Just cancel the freaking game. Anyway, um, so yeah, <laughs> that's coming up. There's a lot, lots of great football coming up tomorrow, y'all. Uh, so looking forward to that. But as Taryn, uh, Taryn and I talked about during our loan break of the, of the, uh, of the morning, He's got to bounce in a few minutes. I got to get going as well. And oh, we got a comment in the chat room. Go Raiders! Thank you, Marcus. Um, did, at least somebody believes in them. Just kidding. I believe in them, but oh my gosh, it's hard to cheer for them. With that said, though, that is gonna do it, man. We are raring and ready to go. Not quite sure if our next show will be happening today. Of course, the uh, state of Ohio sports. Haven't talked to Andrew. He's got some tough times right now with his technology. Um, he'll definitely be back in the new year, but we'll be talking to him soon. So that might be coming up today. And, of course, we've got some great shows. The Carolina cast coming up today at 4 p.m. Pacific time, 7 p.m. Eastern, when the Stag Bowl starts. We also got Title Town Sports coming up tonight. Brandon, Beantown Brandon, uh, would... Uh, not feel so great on on Wednesday night, but he's doing a recap show tonight at 6 p.m. Pacific time, 9 p.m. Eastern. Things moved around tomorrow. Get ready and set for High Octane Entertainment with our boy Justin Lahr talking all Indiana sports, 7 a.m. Pacific time, 10 a.m. Eastern. And then, of course, join Taryn and I at 8 a.m. Pacific time, 11 a.m. Eastern tomorrow as we talk, of course, all those games tomorrow and get you ready for uh, everything coming up in bowl season. And now we have here tomorrow also 11 a.m. Pacific time, 2 p.m. Eastern time. 
Frozen Takes with Miss Amanda with AJ. She'll be coming on that time as well, moving her show. She's a very busy one. And lots of goodies tomorrow as well. Made in Colorado. I believe he's on break until the new year, but we'll talk to him as well. Um, but uh, just great stuff all the way around, of course. And you may or may not hear a surprise from Cecilia and I after like a month of silence again because we're just so freaking busy, but lots of awesome news. So if you, if we ha- if we manage to get a show in this week of the Sports Club Perspectives, we'll see us this weekend. We'll figure those out those details out soon, though. With that said, you guys, that should do it. Taryn, brother, man, where can all these diehards find you, brother? You can find me on Twitter at Taryn Rodriguez one You can find all my volleyball content at sent underscore point IE. And then you can also find my so- SoCal Supreme Sports Show Twitter account at SoCal Show IESR. My main Twitter content is at Taryn Rodriguez one where you could find me covering high school sporting events and then tweeting about how the Chargers are underachieving and how USC needs to do better and all those other things. Yeah. Well, yeah. That's pretty much that. So with that said, brother, that is going to do it for our show here today, man. Without, without further ado, cue the music because we're out of here. All right, y'all. That is going to do it for our show here today. Taryn, I know you're going to bounce, brother, so we will talk to you soon. I'll talk to you tomorrow, man. You take care, brother. Hey, thanks, Blair. Y'all have a great weekend. Enjoy the college football. And I will see you all, or we will see you all tomorrow. (laughs) We'll see you all tomorrow. Take care, brother. I'll talk to you then. Thanks, Blair. Anytime, brother. All right, y'all. Well, that is going to do it once again for our show here today. Day and tomorrow is just gonna be great. Thomas, please, speaker, <laughs> can, can uh, get the conclusion of this one here. Man, what a season it's gonna be in bowl season, man. So really, really, really excited for all the fun, all of the bowls getting underway, and well, it's gonna be a good one, y'all. So with that said. This is me, your boy Larry B. Make sure to follow us on Twitter for all the bowl season action. And uh, big ups to them, man. Big ups to everybody in bowl season. And uh, big ups to all the national champions being crowned. I know we didn't touch on it very much, but Travis Hunter heading on over to Jackson State. In my opinion, a good move for that young man. Uh, we'll talk about that a little bit tomorrow. But uh, in my opinion, personally, I got been carrying down. But big ups to him, and hey, all the best to you at Jackson State playing for Prime, man, playing for Deion Sanders, one of the greatest to ever do it, and there you have it. So, with that said, y'all, for me, your boy Larry B, you can follow me on Twitter at, follow me on Twitter at B-T-H-E-E underscore L-B-5-3, and of course, my boy Taryn, for Taryn Rodriguez, check us out, follow the show here at 3 and Out, all written out, C-E-I-E, and well, we will see you tomorrow. Enjoy the games today. Right back at you tomorrow, same time, same place, right here on IE Sports Radio, your directly for all that sports. We'll see you then. Till then, take care, and as always, take care, and as always, God bless.